The Lord be with you. And welcome. Good morning. Here we are. It's the second Sunday in Lent. Our Lord is not a couple of steps into this Lenten road in our repentance way, but we're going to follow him. He's going to take us all the way, holding us in humble faith. Listen to his word today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70, 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his son's brother, or his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 4. St. Paul writes, what then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as to his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. For the promise to Abraham and to his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. 
Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from and where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess this same faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was dark. Night had fallen on Jerusalem. Candlelight flickered, trying to see what was moving among the shadows. He could hear something, someone breathing. Someone was there listening, deciding whether or not to step out of the shadows and into the light. Robes rustled, and just then Jesus saw who was sneaking around. His name was Nicodemus. He was a rich man, highly regarded from an influential family, but more significantly, he was a Pharisee, one of the top leaders and teachers of God's people, one with authority, both religiously and socially. What was he doing, crawling around at night, hiding? He was trying not to be seen, not coming to speak to Jesus, no. He came on behalf of a hidden group of believers among those Pharisees, Men who wouldn't come to the light lest their deeds should be exposed. A group who knew there was something about this Jesus, but didn't know what to make of him. So he came to him at night on their behalf. Rabbi, 
we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Oh, <laughs> they had seen more than signs. The Pharisees had taken official legal testimony from John the Baptist. They had sent a delegation, put it in writing, made it binding. This wilderness man, John, that everyone knew was God's prophet, had been most clear. Jesus, him, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. He is the Son of God. They've been told who Jesus is, as officially as God could ever tell them. But they didn't believe. No, even to Nicodemus, one interested in him, Jesus is nothing more than a prophet. <laughs> is he ever in for a surprise? Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I know you want to see, Nicodemus, but you don't know what you're looking for. You think of it's enough to be a descendant of Abraham, to be born of his line. No, there's a new birth, a birth from above, the birth of a new nature, one formed by my spirit in the water. You want to see Nicodemus, you must be born again. What? How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's like Nicodemus has forgotten how God made his people Israel the first time. How his Spirit held back the Red Sea waters as he made them his omen and washed away their enemies. This is the new Exodus, Nicodemus. I'm creating the new Israel. <laughs> it's like Nicodemus has forgotten how God created Adam from the dust, how he watered the dust, shaped it, and breathed the new life of his own spirit into it. The new creation is the same way, Nicodemus. I'm creating a new humanity. I want to take your old dust, wet it, and breathe new life into it. I want to baptize you into my death and resurrection, unite you to me in the baptismal waters, make you new by my blood, my life, my death, free from sin, free for real, Nicodemus, free forever. That which is born of the flesh, is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The Spirit breathes wherever he wants. He is free to give his grace where he decides, even as he was free to create Adam by grace in the beginning. And I'm telling you, the place of God's new birth of grace is in the waters of holy baptism. Nicodemus is astonished. He cannot see. How can these things be? How can this new birth happen? What gives baptism such power? You're the teacher of Israel, Nicodemus. And yet you do not understand these things. This is what the scriptures teach. What are you teaching? Jesus is about to unlock the entire Old Testament for him. But first, he rebukes him, because he would not listen to the testimony of John the Baptist. He told you. He told you I am the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Well, tonight, I tell you the same. I am the one fulfilling the scriptures. I am the one who made Adam. And now I'm here in your flesh to make all things new. What gives baptism such power? I do. My death and my blood. This is what none of us are ready for. Jesus wants us 
to see his cross as his throne. That he is lifted up only on it, exalted only on it, revealed as king only as he is crucified. This is where he rules the nations. This is how he loves the world. This is how he gives access to the Father. No one has taken this throne except he who descended, him. No one has had a cross for a throne but Jesus. How do you know that Jesus is the obedient son of the Father? The cross. How do you know that God will be victorious over his enemies? The cross. How does he bring the faithful with him to the Father? The cross. Beloved, how do you know God loves you? When you see his son on the cross. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The lifting up of the snake was necessary to heal sinful people. The lifting up of the sin, Son of Man is necessary to heal the world of sin. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The water and blood of the new birth washing actually flow out of his pierced side when that spear pierced him there and it poured forth. They pour out of his death for you. They spill out upon you from above and water the whole world. Eternal life is in the crucified one. And you have no possibility of eternal life apart from him. Eternal life is not something any creature deserves. Eternal life is God's life. The uncreated life of the Holy Trinity. This is the life spilling all over the ground for you. This is the life pouring from his side into the font, into the cup for you. This is the life that is received and possessed by faith alone. Eternal life. No. This is not just a gift for the future. You know, oh, one day you'll have eternal life. No, you have this life now in your believing. This is the life of faith, a life conformed to him, ruled by him on his throne cross, newly created life in the crucified one. Are we going to let our parts of ourselves stay in the shadows? Are we going to step out into his light? Are we going to keep certain places in our hearts hidden from him? Are we going to let him rule us from his cross of grace? Are we going to live by the flesh? Or are we going to live by the spirit who has made us new? Repent. And believe in the gospel. For this is the way God loves the world. He gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we're going to be including all those we've named in recent weeks. Particularly, let's pray today for Reverend Jacob Quast as he's considering the call to join you as your shepherd or under shepherd, the one the Lord puts there to speak for him. Also, um, let's continue to remember those we've been naming in recent weeks. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
Heavenly Father, your Son has shown your love to the world in his death and resurrection. Give your people hearts to remember your gracious works and to proclaim your name in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you promise us an inheritance, not because of your law, but because of your promise to Abraham and to us. In your grace, nourish us in the faith unto a life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you made your servant Abraham the father of us all through, through faith, and you have given all fathers the calling of Abraham to hand down the gospel of Christ. Fill their hearts with the words of Christ and remember them according to your great mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, remember our nation and its leaders. Bless all who make and minister and judge our laws and enable us to be good and responsible citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, be near the sick and the suffering, especially those we name in our hearts. Comfort them with your divine promises and grant healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Nicodemus was led by the word of Jesus to the cross, and from the cross he received the body of Jesus. Grant us faith like his to trust your word and receive Christ's body and blood in the holy sacrament for forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you give life to the dead and have united the faithful of all ages in the body of Christ. As you shelter all saints in the arms of your mercy, so comfort us who await your final victory over death and the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. My dear ones, God grant you such peace and mercy and grace in his gospel promise you heard today and always. And may it make you run to his supper to receive more of his gifts, many, many more, as much as he will give for what a giver he is. Um, I think... There might be some announcements you should check out in Jordan's email. So I'm just going to prompt you to go and check those out now. God grants you a uh, peace this week and uh, a very um, penitent meditation with the Lord on the other days of the week during Lent. Sundays are actually not technically in Lent, although uh, we, they certainly fall in it. Uh, they don't count in the 40 days. So you can actually break your fast on a Sunday, can you imagine? So uh, may those other Monday to Saturdays be uh, a blessed, a holy exercise for you as you watch your Lord take the full shame, guilt, power, pain, and all of it of sin and your sin uh, all the way to that tree to be crowned and throned there for you with it, defeating it. God grant you this. That's peace.